Okay, let's just start with this. They know now that physics is wrong, the standard model, moment of truth, long-awaited muons, particle surprise, mass, up to end standard model, standard model broken, physics cheer major muon results. This just came out, and they just found these particles, and they know not as a disaster for, in, for mainstream physics. They've got to start over again. It's got magnetism and all kind of other attributes they never suspected. Now don't forget, the standard model doesn't predict gravity. It doesn't know how gravity works. It doesn't know how um, anything really. I mean, we're going to have to go through the entire periodic chart. It's all, it, everything changed. Everything has changed now. Okay, these are the tetraquarks that they found. You see how this goes, the two black ones go this way, the two white ones go this way? You're never going to see two white ones on one side and two black ones. It doesn't work that way. These are just like little bar magnets. And I, I came up with the calculations today, how many there are. I was t talking about 1839. It's really 1835 of these w particles. So a white and black one, there's 1835 of these pairs. And this would be an electron. Back to back, two electrons make a photon. That's what's coming out of a, a light. It bounces off things. Electrons burn into things because they're not complete. That's at the smallest, basically stable particle is light. Smaller than that is electron, not stable at all. But this is Don Lincoln's Fermi Lab point, I mean, um, fixed particle, never changes. I'll show you his article on this. And that's the glowy spot, and this is the one, the point particle, exactly what we're showing here. That's it. And we, we actually did all the work already, so there's nothing left to do. Uh, we know how to make them produce these effects from regular laser light, very simple process. And we created the sterile muons, which is that black ball separated from the white. They came in a black and a white ball. The white one turns into a shower, exactly as CERN says, and the black one does not. It becomes a sterile muon. Now, this happened because of our venturi. And what we did is we used the same effect that they were using, which is the Casimir effect, which is crushing fields together. But we forced them in through the slit to crush their fields. They're hitting them head on. And they're hitting gigantic particles, so they're just getting debris. We're actually seeing the manifestation of the light, and then we're seeing it divide. Let me show you how elegant this is. This is, and, and the color has no effect on the particles. So the particles are the same. The color is a, 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 an energetic value of spin, and I'll show you that in a second. It's, it's really it's spin value. But these are the particles. Now, how did we get them? I'll show you. Well, you can see it right here. We accelerated light, and then we hit the Venturi with it. These particles are here. Zip! Bang! Split. All right? Exactly what CERN and Fermi Lab want to see. And I believe this black is dark matter and dark energy, and it is all the weight of the particle, basically. This only has no, virtually no weight at all. And I think if we use the correct technology, we may be able to harvest... That energy right there, just like you're using a solar panel to do, and get free energy. That's what I'm hoping for. That's why I'm doing this presentation. All right, these particles are not in the correct configuration. There should be two of them this way and two of them that way, just like bar magnets back to back. However, they did find the tetraquark, they're calling it, which is nothing more than the dipole photon. Photons are made up of four particles. Electrons are only made up of two. But they're made up of two of this, but they stand straight up. And they, they do because of the Earth, because of the gravitational influence of the Earth to these particles. They don't sit side by side like that. Now, this is physicists at CERN made an incredible discovery that changes everything. And which is, it's all this tetraquark thing. It's all over the news now. See, here's another one just yesterday, or it might have been today. They discovered the first ever pair of tetraquarks. Let me show you what they are. Now, you saw the particles. This is the new model. Dipoles. Everything is made of dipoles. Nothing but dipoles. Everything's made of those two particles right there. The black one and the glowy one. Electron neutrino, muon neutrino. Electron neutrino makes the showers. Muon neutrino is just a big, heavy-duty, black, 
it's, it's gravity, it's dark matter and dark energy. Nobody's ever seen it before because you don't see it. It's attached to the white one. All you see is the white one. The white one's the one that glows that, that you can see. You never see these. The only reason you see these is because of the experiments we did using the Venturi and using literally a smartphone. And I'll show you the article about it. You see this? This goes right back to the same time frame. This is October 2014. Well, 2012 they put out the Samsung Galaxy 3S, which is what we use. And this, and we were getting these, they, they're actually using them for cosmic ray detectors. Listen to this. It says, at this time, it says, soon a growing capability of smartphone will be harnessed to detect cosmic rays in much the same way as high-end multi-million dollar observatories did. And they actually were, this Galaxy phone, all the things I just showed you were taken on that phone back at this time frame. Now, it says the apps basically transform the phone into high-energy particle detectors. It uses the same principles as these very large experiments. Now listen to this. Don Lincoln from Fermilab, same time frame, 2013, same time frame we, we did our stuff, said that empty space isn't empty. Obviously, it's filled with the particles of light that I showed you. Now, he also, at this exact time, showed these same particles that I'm telling you about. He said, what's the point? It's, this is the fixed particle. This is the point particle. This is Fermilab. Don Lincoln, again, he did both of these articles. He says, in summary, extended particles have a fixed size. That's the black one. And they may have a fuzzy edge, which is the little red-looking edge around. The point-like particles are abstractions with zero size. And that's possible because they don't knock over houses on atomic bombs. And I can show you that. But even zero-size particles have an extended effect because of their fields. So here's Don, that was Don Lincoln again. All right, and that's 2013, same deal. And there was something else I wanted to show you. Can I show you the quantum foam, the whole... Well, he, maybe I didn't, but here it is. The quantum foam says that empty space isn't empty. Light, oh, I did show you that. Light particles are everywhere. Okay, this goes back to uh, 2013 again. This is Cornell, and they had the neutrino nucleus. Neutrino is what we're talking about. Nucleus is the core, quasi-elastic, four particles together, which is the 2P2H. And gigavolt, 10 gigavolt, uh, gigaelectron volts. Now, they did some kind of research here, and I think their conclusion was that there may be excess energy coming out of here. That's the way I took it. And as far as I know, they dropped it. Now, this is, this is all about dark matter, gravity, Higgs bosons. Now, apparently they're using some kind of rare earth element and hitting it real hard and blowing off these particles. We're just using light. Okay, let's just start here. The physicists are spellbound by the deepening mystery of muon particles magnetism. Totally not understood. Long-awaited muon physics moment of truth. Particle surprise mass threatens to up on standard model. Standard model broken? Yes. Physicists cheer major muon results. Well, let's take a look at it. 